One of the most important roles for the human resources department in a business is to find the best people for the job and then train them to be able to do it effectively. The process known as recruitment, selection and training. So once they've identified a job vacancy which needs to be filled, they're going to need to prepare a job description about the post that's available. So that's going to include things like the job title, what's involved in the job, roles, tasks and responsibilities. So it's really covering things like who they will report to, who the person is going to be in charge of and what the job is going to involve day to day. Alongside this, a person specification will need to be put together, which describes the qualifications, skills and experience that they're looking for in the candidate. And often this is going to be split up into necessary. So the ones that would be a real deal breaker and people shouldn't bother applying without and desirable characteristics, which they would like, but might still consider applicants without them. Um, and in terms of qualifications, they might include things like A-levels, degrees or professional qualifications. Skills might include things like proficiency with certain computer programs or interpersonal skills and experience might be required in a similar post in the past in order to be considered for the job. Once these documents have been drawn up, they'll be put together into the advertisement for the job with candidates putting in their applications. The business would study these applications and then put together a short list to invite for interview before making final decisions on the most suitable candidate. When deciding on who this candidate's going to be, the options would be to promote from within, filling vacancies with people already working at the organisation, that would be called internal recruitment, or to look outside the organisation using a strategy of external recruitment. And each of these will have their own benefits and drawbacks. So internal recruitment can be really good for motivating current staff. It shows them that there are opportunities for them in the future and that can help them to reduce labour turnover. And it also means that the business will already know the candidate and their strengths and weaknesses. It's difficult to really get a feel for a new candidate, even in quite an extensive interview process. And so you're always going to know more about someone who has worked with you for a number of months or years. The downside is that you limit yourself to a much smaller field if you only look within. And also it creates another vacancy which then has to be filled potentially by external recruitment anyway. External recruitment is often used to bring in fresh ideas and different perspectives. So you get experience of working with other companies and different ways of doing things and that can be really valuable to bring into your business. The downside is that finding the best candidate will be more difficult and the whole process of recruitment and selection will therefore be longer and more costly. Once you've found the right candidate and given them the job, it's important to give them appropriate training in order for them to be as productive as possible. And whether it takes a week, a day or even just a few hours or even minutes, most jobs will have some form of induction training at the start, helping a new employee to settle into their role. And then ongoing training tends to take the form of either on the job training, which is given in the place of work or off the job training, which will take place in a different location and setting. And again, they'll have their own benefits and costs. So with on the job training, you're learning by doing, and so more likely to build skills that are really relevant to the specific job role that's going to be carried out. But trying to train employees during the day-to-day -day operations of the business can be quite disruptive and also might lead to mistakes if full training hasn't taken place before releasing the employees into their job role. Off the job training gives workers the chance to learn from outside specialists and so also potentially less likely to pick up bad habits from other employees leading the training within the organisation. But while we said that on the job training can be quite disruptive with off the job training, you're actually completely removing the workers from their job for a period of time. And so not only will you need to pay the outside providers, 
but also need to consider the opportunity cost. So what's sacrificed in terms of lost output for the time that workers are missing from their job. So to give a summary of the recruitment selection and training process in order, it might look a bit like first designing the job description and person specification, then publishing the job advert, which would contain both of those documents, shortlisting the candidates from who's applied, conducting interview and assessments of those candidates, identifying the best candidate for the job and making them the job offer, and then carrying out induction and continuing training. Now that whole process can be quite extensive. And so every time a business recruits a new employee, the whole process is going to be quite costly. You've got to pay people to put together job descriptions and person specifications. You've got to pay external agencies to host adverts or conduct any off the job training. And as we said before, you've always got to consider not just the cost of these things, but the opportunity cost as well. Staff that are involved in training or the selection process can't be productive in other areas. But most businesses would view this as very much a price worth paying to get the right person. Properly trained workers with the right skills and good experience are going to be more productive, which is really what you're looking for from this whole process. Also, effective recruitment selection and training helps to reduce labour turnover because a good match for a job will be less likely to leave. It's why you might actually hear about candidates being passed over because they are overqualified for a role. You don't want to spend all of that money on the recruitment process just to see the person that you appoint move on soon after accepting the job.